Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about junior developers and what they need to know. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do junior developers need to know to work as software developers? Well, that's a pretty big question. I've actually answered this in a few videos before, but I'm going to take this one on as well, because I think that I, would, I like to think that even though my answer, the heart and soul of every answer that I give should be pretty much the same because it's not gonna it, it doesn't change all that much uh, the retelling will maybe give new people some insights so what you at least from my perspective need to know as a junior developer is that you need to get yourself to a point where you are close enough to knowing how to work as an independent professional software developer that a, if we put you together with somebody else or you, we put you in an environment where you might have someone more experienced that we can bridge the last distance. I used to have a uh, martial arts teacher, teacher who said that the uh, he explained the like they start the art of combat or like fighting somebody in this way he said that the less training you have the more luck is involved when you're fighting somebody. The more training you have, the less luck you need to get a to win the fight. But there was there's always going to be a tiny gap. No matter how much you train, you will never be able to bridge the reality factor without actually doing something. In other words, no matter how much we train our soldiers in a simulated environment, the only time they will really know how it is to do combat is when they actually are out there fighting for their life. And that is, uh, it's the same sort of thing with uh, with this, where you can absolutely practice and you can like develop yourself. And what you're going for isn't to to learn by yourself as a junior developer how everything works, because it's impossible without you actually doing the work in a real and professional environment. It's not going, to, you're not going to get bridge that distance. Uh, but that's not what you're after. You're after getting to to getting so close that with a little bit of guidance here and there you will be able to do it the whole way and like actually survive um, it's uh, it, that, that's what you're going for and for you to figure out like what you need to learn like it's I mean it's a google away you just search for the uh, like my personal suggestion is that you go and have a look at the job postings and you have a look at what tools are requested I've repeated this a million times before and it's it's still going to be the best tip anybody's ever going to be able to give you. I don't care who they are. I don't care what boot camps uh, they're selling at what price or if they worked at Google in the, uh, or whatever. They will never be able to give you a better answer than go and look at the job postings if you want to figure out what's relevant because the job postings are where you will find the people who are paying are openly saying we are, we will pay you to know this and then you just create your own, yourself a little bit of a list a range of things no blog article will will beat this no nothing there's nothing out there that will beat this uh, because this is that that right there that's where that, that, that there that's that's the offer that's the thing that people are going to pay you for so if you do that you will get a good first sensation of the tools that you need to know. The problem afterwards is going to be, and this is why I created this channel in the first place, once you have gotten over the hump of just learning some basic coding and you kind of get to a point where, yeah, I sort of know how these tools work and I can build some basics, the real question comes, and that's the root of this question, when am I ready? to go in and become a software developer, what is required of real software developers. And that's why I sit here every single morning or every single afternoon endlessly, endlessly, endlessly and record videos where I try to answer questions related to what it means to be a real software developer. Since I am one, I I mean, I'm not special in any way. I am the most ordinary developer that you can imagine in terms of I have the ordinary position doing the stuff that the vast majority of people are doing in the industry and I that, that, that that's really it and that's why I can't give you a perfect answer I can't just give you an entire 
a, a layout of like all the things that you would need to know or think about or learn in order to just be a professional. All I can give you is the best answers that I can give from my perspective as somebody who's doing this and then it basically becomes, I said this to another uh, another subscriber who asked the same question, I said I can't answer that question perfectly in one video. All I can do is to try to answer a part of that an uh, of part of the question every day because that is how big the question actually is. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're looking to figure out what a junior software developer needs to know, you can go and look for it. There's tons of roadmaps for tools and like things that you should know. If you want the surest, best source of knowing what you what's, what's going to be required of you, go and have a look at the job postings. I promise you nothing is going to be better than that because that's where people actually post what they need from their developers and what they're actually going to pay you if you know this stuff. there's not the, there, That's the best receipt you can get on what's worth lo looking into regardless regardless of what some YouTuber is telling you, regardless of what some TikToker is saying that this is the trendiest, biggest thing, if nobody is paying you to do that, you fucking ignore it. It's a nice to have thing. You don't ha you, you can't afford as a junior developer to get mixed up in a, lo a lot of hype and, uh, and trendiness that doesn't really have any value to you in the real world. You need to focus on the, to get the core stuff in place first so that you can actually make a living from this thing and then you have to practice as my martial arts trainer used to say until the distance between you as a beginner or an amateur and a professional is so little uh, so small that someone is willing to take a chance on you and you can start working in a real environment and then you actually get to understand all of the perspectives that I might be able I might give you uh, from my perspective, like because now you're we're looking at things at, from two different angles, and the second I promise you, you get into from my perspective, you will start to see a lot of the, well, I hope s su like at least some of the useful stuff that I might have been saying, uh, it will start to make sense uh, to you, and the the real answer to this question is that I try to answer the specific question every single day, because like uh, unfortunately there's so much to this question what you need to know that I it's impossible for me to give you a comprehensible answer in just one video uh, that's why I really urge you to try to figure find sources of guidance mentors people like that who are actually giving uh, giving you uh, the, the, the perspective of somebody who's doing this as a professional because having a mentor as a junior developer or someone who can give some tips and hints about certain things that you are unsure about is invaluable once you get to the point where you want to bridge that last distance from being an amateur to becoming a professional. Have a great day.